Greetings to all viewers. This is Professor Ankit Singh. We'll now move to the next topic that is traffic islands. Firstly, let us try to understand what are traffic islands. Now, traffic islands are structures which are built in between the roads in order to improve the safety of road users and also to improve the efficiency of traffic. Okay. So basically here you can see in these figures there is some area in between the roads. Okay. Now this area is can be provided for various purposes. We will try to understand why we provide those area and why are these traffic islands built. Okay. Firstly let us have a look at the functions of traffic islands. They define the path of the driver in complicated locations. Okay. In locations where or intersections where there are more number of roads meeting, a driver might get confused while he wants to travel to a particular direction. There what we do is we try to provide directional islands or channelizing islands. Okay. In order to reduce the area of traffic conflict okay in order to reduce the number of accidents for example considering the rotary island here if there is no island present at the center then there might be possibilities of accidents occurring when a vehicle traveling from the left wants to cross to the right or the southern direction vehicle traveling from the east wants to cross to the southern direction while the other vehicles from the east north etc are traveling to the same intersection okay so in order to improve the safety what we do is we provide this intersection at the uh, sorry we provide this traffic island at the center of the intersection so that the vehicles will need to travel along this traffic island and then move to their required directions. It serves as an area of location uh, area for location of various types of signs and signals. So various types of signs and signals can be placed on these traffic islands. Okay. Direct vehicular traffic to minimize traffic conflicts. Okay. In order to channelize the traffic. Okay. With the help of these traffic islands, we channelize the movement of traffic. Separate traffic streams. Okay. So traffic islands can be used as medians as you can see here okay in order to separate any two flow of directions of vehicles or any two lanes. Prevent undesirable movement and turns okay provide protection to pedestrians yes while the pedestrians cross the roads maybe at intersections or even at mid block then the pedestrian can cross a single lane and then climb on to the traffic island and whenever he sees an opportunity to cross the other lane he can do so without any hazard okay To improve the efficiency of operation at intersections. So using these traffic islands, the traffic flow is improved. Now traffic islands can be classified based on their functions. They can be classified into four types. <coughs> Divisional islands, channelizing island, pedestrian island and rotary island. Divisional islands. 
separate the separate opposing flow of traffic thus eliminating head on collisions and reducing general accidents they also reduce headlight glare during night okay now these divisional islands what they do is they separate opposing traffic okay and also they separate different lanes so there are less chances of head on collision and there is reduced glare to the drivers from the opposite lane next is channelizing island these are used to guide traffic into proper channel through the intersectional area they are useful at grade intersections for large areas they minimize the points of conflicts okay so here you can see these islands over here and also this island at the center okay what they do is they channelize the left moving traffic and the right moving traffic even here you can see so by doing this what happens is we try to reduce the number of conflict points or reduce the number of accidents pedestrian islands it is usually provided at bus stops and similar places for protection of pedestrians rotary island it is a large central island of a rotary intersection okay so this here is an example of rotary island now the next type of control device is traffic signals as most of us would already know about traffic signals traffic signals are used to regulate the traffic and they try to improve the efficiency and reduce the number of accidents all power operated devices for regulating directing or warning motorists and pedestrians are called as traffic signals okay so these traffic signals could be signals for the vehicles and they can also be the signals for pedestrians the main requirement of traffic signals are to draw attention provide mean and meaning and time to respond and to have minimum waste of time so what are the functions and advantages they provide orderly movement of traffic they increase the intersection capacity they they reduce the number of accidents <coughs> they permit the vehicles and pedestrians to cross in proper manner by controlling the conflicts okay they provide continuous movement of traffic at design speed assign priority of movement and right of way okay so assigning priority of movement is if there are there is movement in more than one direction then for some particular time the priority may be given to one direction and later on to the other directions okay and they provide the right of way to travel promote drivers confidence by reducing conflicts to warn of possible danger and to control traffic at rail level crossing and bridges okay these are a few functions or advantages of traffic signals what are the disadvantages now the rear end collision may increase rear end collision is the type of collision where a vehicle from behind hits the vehicle in front okay there may be chances of violation of rules okay there are few characters which could anyways violate these rules okay so there are chances that violation of rules might happen and then there is failure of system okay since all this might be operated by machinery or might be manual in the case of machinery operated signals there can be chances of failure 
Now, what are the different types of traffic signals? Traffic control signals, which include fixed time signal, vehicle actuated signal, and semi vehicle actuated signal. Then pedestrian signals, and then there are special traffic signals and coordinated signals. Okay. So now we will have a look into the traffic signals in depth. We will try to understand what are fixed time signals. These are those signals in which the green periods and hence the cycle lengths are predetermined and of fixed duration. Okay. So as we know traffic signals for controlling road users or vehicular traffic we use three types of lights red green and amber okay red denotes stop green denotes go and ambers is for clearance time okay so here in fixed time signals the timing of the green period or the red period is fixed so the total cycle length of the traffic signal is fixed in vehicle actuated signals, these are those in which the green time vary and related to the actual demand may made by traffic. Okay, so here what we do is we provide sensors at the roads. Now, with the help of these sensors, the green time, the red time, and the amber time can be changed. Okay. vehicle sorry semi vehicle actuated signals now these are the intermediate type in which the right of way normally rests within the road and detectors are located on main roads okay so this is a combination of the vehicle actuated and the fixed time signals then there are pedestrian signals these are meant to give the right of way to pedestrians to cross road during the walk period when the vehicle traffic shall be stopped by red or stop signals on the traffic signals of the road. So these pedestrian signals will denote or will provide right of way to pedestrians to travel when there is a red signal for the vehicular traffic. Then there are a few terms that we need to understand. Cycle, it is nothing but the completion of one whole cycle of this traffic signals. Okay. Supposingly, there are four directions or four roads meeting at this point. Consider this diagram. Okay. So a signal is placed at the center. One cycle is when the traffic moving from this suppose the traffic entering the intersection from the south and later on it will move to the west then to north then east and then again to the south now this completion of this process is known as one cycle okay so in one cycle there will be green time for southern direction then green time for western direction green time for northern direction and green time for eastern direction then again it will come to the southern direction now this will complete one cycle cycle length is nothing but the total interval or the total time for one cycle phase now phases are the different durations or different signals that we provide okay there are three signals as i mentioned earlier red amber and green now these three are different three phases okay then there is interval interval is the time duration for a single phase clearance interval it is the time for the vehicles who have already 
entered the intersection to cross the intersection okay so it is nothing but the amber time it is the time in which the vehicles who have already entered the intersection need to cross that intersection then there is all red period now all red period is the time in which the signals for all the roads in this intersection are at a red phase okay then intergreen period intergreen period is the period between the green signal of any two roads okay supposingly if the green signal for the road from the southern direction ends at 30 seconds okay and the green signal for the western road would start at 36 seconds then the interval or the space between these two green times would be 6 seconds okay that is nothing but the intergreen period now types of traffic signal system there are few types uh the first one is simultaneous system in which the same indication is given at the same time okay now there might be a road joining point a and point b and there might be a number of intersections in between okay so if all these intersections display the same phase might be red or green okay during the same exact time then that is known as the simultaneous system next is alternate system now in the alternate system all the signals for the same road would display alternate signals okay if the first one displays a green then the second one would be displaying a red at the same time the third one would be displaying green and the fourth one would be displaying red and so on okay then there is simple progressive system in which the phase and intervals may change at each signal but cycle length is same okay so this progressive types of systems would use the help of sensors okay here what happens the phase and the intervals might change but the cycle length would be same but in the flexible progressive system the phases intervals and cycle length all might be varied okay and this happens automatically with the help of sensors okay so this is all for traffic signals i'll start with the next topic in my next class Thank you.